So, hello, welcome. Um, my name is Pete Quill. I'm going to talk about the next space project, which Tartu University is in, uh, involved. And um, I'm representing the Institute of Technology Laboratory of Smart Systems and Materials. Uh, We're just in the beginning, so my distinguished college colleague uh, showed you a lot of videos and, and pictures. I don't show you, show you any because I haven't got yet. We're quite in the beginning, quite, quite in the start. Ah, right, I forgot to... I put a 40, so that's the official version of it. What we are going to do is we are going to build a test bed for space habitat. Popularly we call it Martian house. Uh, what we are going to build will never fly anywhere. It's uh, to test the technology to try to solve some of the aspects of living in extreme environments. The extreme environments can be not just in space, it also can be um, in a, on terrestrial uh, circumstance disaster areas, and so on as a force. So it has a, a usage also, even if it never flies. Um, if, you, if you look at the ex extreme environments, there's usually uh, places where there's nothing there, or nothing usable, or nothing dependable. So if you want to survive in these situations, you need to take it with you. And that's often the problem, if uh, you are limited in what you can take with you. And therefore, the goal, what we want to, there is obviously the need to have such uh, living spaces or habitats where you can survive. They need to be compact, easy to, easy to take there, and they need to be able to open themselves or make themselves functional in a, in a relatively short period and as, as automatic as possible. So building your house is not the main task when you go there. So, uh, and that's using automatic building methods or uh, deployable houses or adaptable housings or living spaces hasn't been done much. Uh, there are different research going on but it's mostly research. Very few things are actually built. So that we feel that there is a, a big future for such things. Uh, we don't have them because we don't know to, how to do it. We, we, we can't afford them. Uh, if, you, if you look around, then architecture is always adapted. So you need more space to build a new wing. If you have been in Louvre, you can see how the architecture has adapted by the, according to the needs of the people living there. Um, so what we, what, what we, in the end of the day, will build is something. I honestly don't know what, we, what, what, what will, be, we, we will be in the end of the uh, road. There will be a, a habitat which we can, we will actually make it happen. It's not a uh, theoretical study. We have a physical um, uh, object in the end of the road. Most likely it will be, as it's described, five, roughly five meter, meters in diameter, which will pack itself or unpack itself into it as compact a shape as possible. And uh, this will never fly. This will be used for, uh, for research. What we, and this, the, the outcome from this project will be reused for maybe a rare thing. Uh, as strange as it, as it may be, it, it has been, we started with the project actually in the uh, 1st of January this year, and it's been now six months. And uh, I already made a budget for the next one, and there are inquiries for the third one. So it actually is a, a demand for such things. So far it's based, mostly research-based, but uh, we will believe that there will be something coming out of it. So who, who is uh, involved in this? This is um, 
uh, we're not alone. Like uh, it's a European-funded, uh, co-founded project. So the the um, consortium partners, its uh, project coordinator is integrated. Uh, sorry, International uh, Space University in Strasbourg. <coughs> they are. Uh, running the, the whole project. Then uh, Liquify Systems is one from Austria. They are the space architects. They have been, uh, they are the ones who do at this current phase, what, what we are doing at the moment is uh, trying to get to these trade, trade off studies. We have ideas what we are going to do and we pluses, minuses, benefits and shortcomings. So, we try to figure out what we, what we will uh, build eventually. So they, these people are, uh, they have built uh, parts of the current International Space Station, or uh, uh, designed at least, if, if not built. So they are the specialist force who understands how <coughs> you feel yourself, how, how the human aspect of, of, of being in space. Uh, space application services, this is a Belgian company. They have built a couple of Martian rovers and moon rovers and, and uh, heavily involved in space technology and uh, actually building uh, real things which actually fly. And then there is us. Uh, what, what, why we are there is uh, we are the ones who will do the robotic bits of it the actual opening and closing of whatever uh, we decide the method, how, how it will work. And we, we are responsible for uh, the system design of uh, thermal system and uh, power systems. And we will actually build it. That's the main reason of being in this project, like my, my, Mark told before, to inspire the students. The students will, will actually make it happen physically with their hands. Uh, that will start in May next year, the building phase of it. Uh, COMEX is a uh, com company in Marseille. They will be responsible for the life support systems and the toilet. <coughs> Sobriety is a Czech company. They are uh, specialized in all sorts of finite length modeling and analysis. They will be optimizing mostly the design and space innovations is a small Czech company. Uh, they were actually, the guy, there's a, uh, one man uh, who is a former graduate of uh, Space University who more or less pulled this project. He initiated it. And he's responsible for outreach and dissemination. So the work as such is organizing the work packages. Um, Review of state of the art, that's more or less done. Uh, concept identification and selection, that's what we're doing at the moment. We should be finished with that end of July, start of August. Then I might be able to show you a picture. <laughs> at the moment, I haven't got any. <laughs> and then the, it will uh, be the detail, actual design, uh, optimi optimization, building, assembly, integration, testing, and running. And that's it. So that's a boring bit, how this organization is organized. We have our flow charts. Uh, that's a timeline where we are today, relatively in the beginning. So what I promise to do for you is, in the second half of 2015, I'll send you all an invitation. To, to Strasbourg, and then you can walk into the house and feel how, how it is to live in Mars. And that I promise to do. But until then, it's, it's still a long way, way to go. Um, like it is with these research projects, the budget is fixed. Uh, that's one of the constraints which limits what we can build and what we will build. It's 2.3 million euros uh, total uh, cost. And the European com uh, uh, contribution to that is 1.9 million euros. Uh, for a small house, it's a lot. For a space habitat, it's quite, quite small. So uh, we will do 
The purpose is to build a high, high fidelity living space. It should be as realistic as possible. But as I said, one constraint is the budget. So if we can't afford a nuclear power station, we will not buy one. Okay. And uh, we, we focus on the, on the bits which are important, which is the robotic deployment and uh, making the habitat itself move. So we, we, can, we might be cutting corners in this, put a box somewhere in the corner and say this is a nuclear power station with a label. <coughs> but uh, that's where we are today. So that's the small uh, bit, what, once more, what we are responsible for. First of all, the main thing is physically building it in Tartu. We already rented the uh, room for that. Then uh, we will build it. Then it will move, move from here to Marseille. Uh, our French colleagues will put in the life support system and run some, they have a, that speciality is submarine uh, habitats, submarine things, so they have a huge, huge paro, paro chamber. Maybe we put it in, push it through that. Not sure yet, but if it can survive that test, we'll do that. And then uh, from there, that will move to Strasbourg, uh, where that will be done then in the International Space University, they will do the operation. Uh, what happens after the end of this program is very much up to discussion. As I said, there are already feelers out. Uh, there's an extra European uh, space project which wants to use it for there testing. It's in Rio Tinto in, uh, in Spain. They are going to, it's a different consortium, but some of these uh, members are also part of that uh, effort. They are trying to develop a space suit, a space uh, suit port for the habitat. There is also a very, very first contact with an Italian group who wants to take the habitat to Morocco to test there. They, they, they pretend the Mars is in Morocco, the European uh, mass polygon is, is in Spain. <coughs> and uh, Professor Alva Ablo is actually the guy who should be here talking to you, but unfortunately it collided with another conference for him. So I'm the project manager for this uh, research project in Tartu University, so I take the stage. Um, so far you haven't seen a picture, and that's the purpose. Once again, I will show you a few pictures which has nothing to do with the stuff we do. It's just for inspiration and the background, what we, we, we use ourselves, so you're not, you're not get bored, get, getting bored. That's how uh, science fiction thought that the robotic building will happen in two, uh, 1910. That's a postcard from there. And that's actually how it is done today. These things are real, or even if it's a computer image. You are interested in history, not the future. <laughs> you can download the presentation if you want. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a, a computer image, but these things are real. Uh, if you click on the links, if you want to have them, you can see that they're actually working. But most of this is still research. It's, it's, this happens. Uh, but these things are coming, do we like them or not? So this is more, uh, there is a heavy research going on in printing stuff, everything. Uh, everything, I will say in 15 years, 10 years, most of the things you, which surround you will be printed in some sort of 3D printing technology. So there are heavy research going on how to print bridges and, and stuff. Um, that's a research project in, in uh, that's Photoshop, that's not real. <laughs> the, uh, what they do is they take the ground and mix it with some sort of binder and it, then it solidifies and you can build structures. They have built chairs, they never built a, a bridge. But that's uh, one way of, of solving the problem. This is real, this guy is actually real, that's true. Uh, that's in Sahara, in, in Egypt, uh, actual machine, nothing but uh, sand and s sun. And uh, he's built a small tent office there, and it actually works. 
using just the energy from sun melt, a, the, turn, the, turn the sun into glass and you can build anything you want as long as it's from glass. <laughs> you, can, you can have any color as long as it's black. But uh, this, is, this is science fiction still, but uh, yes, uh, European Space Agency has um, projects for looking into this technology also to build uh, from local materials, uh, lunar base, for example, using this printing-like technology. But this is very far off still. Well, not, maybe, maybe not that, that far off. This is uh, partly real life, uh, which we call adaptive architecture. The house on the left side, this is not doing much really. It's just turning and catching the sun. But it's the first step. It's, it's, it's rotating around the axis. The one in the middle is also real. It happens. If, if you want, probably you can buy one if you want. It's a six by six meters uh, cube where you can live. And you have a bedroom, you have a bathroom, you have a kitchen, and you don't use them at the same time. So you can turn whichever one, to, uh, one you want to use and use that. It will be a painful process. You want to go to the fridge You're in, the, in the middle of the night. You have to go out of the bedroom, turn the thing, go to... <laughs> Probably don't want to do that very often. <coughs> the one in the up, up there is, uh, is, uh, is science fiction. That's not real, but uh, there's a lot of research going on of uh, how to make the architecture adapt, adapt to the changing needs. It's a question of can we do that and what will, will, will that cost? So hopefully end of our project we have reduced this margin so it, it's more, more affordable. This uh, project itself is for growing algae and uh, the robotic arm is powered by, somehow by the algae. There's a magic element somewhere in between. I don't know how, to, how they exactly convert the algae into energy, but if you, look, if you read the description, then the algae is moving the robotic arm there. <coughs> and uh, this is an uh, inspiration what we use for deployable structures. A uh, simple tent is a deployable structure. Everybody has seen one, used one probably. And there's a lot of, lot of different ideas and a lot of different uh, sources where we can get your inspiration, how to do it. Uh, tents, simple ones, genius ones. The one up there is very, it's a brilliant one. It's deployed, it's, it works as a, as a parachute. If you can drop down, it's just ready, deployed. There's a laundry basket version of a tent, boop, it goes up, very simple. Um, that's fascinating technology, you know, what you can do with simple, very, very, very basic, simple mechanisms, uh, deployable structures. Uh, that's probably the one of the most well-known buzzwords, Chuck Hoberman, and his uh, geodesic dome and deployable structures. The one on the, on the, on the right side, that's a salt plate hit the Olympic uh, scene and the curtain opening and closing. If you watch the videos, it works like magic. Goes away, comes down. Origami inspired uh, thing, methods, many things what you can do, fold together, unfold. There's a lot of science actually involved today in, in, uh, in origami. You can take, basically take any, any form and fold it. It just takes a lot of other folds. So that we're looking at all these options. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the most likely scenario. Something like this is most likely to, to happen. So we have a rigid structure which we open up somehow, make it bigger, and, uh, but it's not certain. But that's probably the, the likely that direction where, where, where it gets. But it's, uh, as I said, second half of 2015, I'll send you an invitation. You can go inside, have a feel. Um, I think that's it.